Hi, welcome back to another exciting video of Cinema Recap. Today I'm going to recap a 2013 horror and thriller film titled I Spit on Your Grave 2. Spoiler warning, watch out and take care. The film begins with Katie who is shown to be a sweet young lady. She used to work in the cafe. She on the other hand aspires to be a model. She also informs her friend. Her friend suggests that she plan a photo shoot and Katie notices an ad there. She makes a mental note of their phone number. Katie sees their page when she gets home and it appeals to her. Katie calls the phone number. She sends them a portfolio of her photos. They like her photo and invite her to the studio at 10 a.m. Katie goes there the next morning. There was a strange shoot going on there. Katie, on the other hand, meets with three boys. They were siblings. One is a curly-haired boy named Ivan and another is their brother. Katie has also brought some clothing. Ivan requests that she wear a lovely dress from that collection. Ivan appears unhappy when Katie wears the dress. He asks her to wear a shorter dress than this. Katie was a nice girl, but she can't do this just to become a model. She walks away from there without saying anything. She also abandons her dream to become a model. The next day, she went jogging, and when she returned, someone knocked on her door. He's the brother of Ivan, the curly-haired boy. He hands her a USB drive with your photos on it. Katie says she doesn't need them, and the curly-haired boy says, don't worry, we deleted your photos. As a result, you will not feel bad. You can see your photographs here. Katie accepts the USB. The curly-haired boy who was seeing Katie's pictures in a dark and silent room. He has not removed them. On the other hand, when Katie goes out of her house at night to throw out the garbage, the curly-haired boy takes advantage of the opportunity and enters her apartment. Katie is unaware of this and continues to sleep. When she wakes up in the middle of the night, she notices the curly-haired boy photographing her. She comes to a halt and slashes his face with something. She's now attempting to flee from what appears to be a laser machine. She screams as well, but the curly-haired boy covers her mouth. He drags her into the house. He misbehaves with her, beating and even kicking her. He stabs a piece of cloth and requests that she remain silent. He ties her hands behind her back and turns them behind him. He tortures her once more. He threatens to kill you if you make a sound. A neighbor arrives after hearing Katie's voice, but the curly-haired boy stabs him in the stomach several times and kills him. It means he has taken a life here and is unsure what he will do with Katie. He then cuts his face with a knife. He realizes his error after some time. He screams, sobs, and then summons his brothers, Ivan and his other sibling. They get there right away. Instead of reprimanding him, they begin removing his fingerprints and take away all evidence that can be used to prove that their brother committed the murder. They chose a knife and place Katie's fingerprints on it while removing the fingerprints. They place it near the dead body of a neighbor so it'll seem as Katie has killed him and then she escaped. After it, they make Katie eat drugs. They take her with them somewhere. When Katie comes to her senses, she sees Ivan is doing bad with her. Other brothers of Ivan start doing creepy things with her as they were spitting on her. They leave from there, but Katie's condition had deteriorated and she was distraught. They again come here. They give her new clothes, but this time, Katie attacks the head of the curly-haired boy. She screams as she exits and meets the sheriff and detective. The detective takes her to the office with him. Fortunately, he's a decent individual. Meanwhile, a lady enters detective's office and states, I am a lady and it's also done with me. Allow me to speak with Katie. She will feel better. The lady is permitted by the detective. She wasn't a good lady though because she was the mother of those boys. Katie will be trapped here once more. She forces her to sit in her car and Katie informs her that she wishes to visit the American embassy. She tells her not to worry and call someone in the car. She says we're going home and then you can't go to the American embassy. Katie trusts her and this is one of Katie's biggest mistakes. The lady was in fact the mother of the boy with curly hair. Ivan's stepmother was her. It means Ivan and the boy with the curly hair were stepbrothers. The lady then takes Katie to a basement which is the same location where Katie was previously placed. Ivan is once again holding Katie. Katie is spit on by the women. With it, Ivan's father arrives. He begins to torture her. He uses laser to deliver electric shocks to her. He treats her badly after that. Then we see Ivan's mother enter her room and began crying while playing music, revealing that she was also forcing herself to do this task. She was also under the thumb of others. Katie's condition had worsened. Even so, Ivan was beating her. He was kicking her and then digging in the ground. He locks Katie in a box and buries her in the ground. He makes the grave of her. The good thing is that there was a stone in the grave. It falls due to the weight of the box and the box also falls. The box opens and Katie comes out luckily. When she sees it, it was a sewerage line. 
Katie becomes happy and she feels some courage. She begins to look for a door from which she can exit. She finds the church when she opens the door. She also meets a father there, and after seeing her condition, he talks to her nicely. He provides her with warm clothing and food. He knew Katie wouldn't trust anyone at this point. He stops talking to her and lets her go from there. Katie leaves but returns to the church. My daughter, my father, can I call the police? They will assist you. But Katie refuses him and then quotes the Bible, making it clear that the enemies will be punished. Katie breaks into Ivan's house and steals some money. The following morning, she visits the coffee shop where the curly-haired boy was sitting. He notices Katie, who has been locked up. He pursues her because she's still alive. Katie visits the sewage line once more. The curly-haired teen follows her. Katie arrives here fully prepared. She knocks him out while putting a rope around his neck. She tortures him and uses a knife to cut his body. His blood was wasted as a result. On the other side, she enters the bar and approaches Ivan and the other brother who's drinking. She invites him to drink some more. He goes to the restroom because he feels like vomiting. Katie walks behind him, locks him in the bathroom, then opens the door and pushes his head into the toilet. His condition deteriorates as a result of the door and storage of breathing, and he perishes there. It was now Ivan's father's turn. He messed up with Katie. Katie also causes him to pass out after hitting him on the head with a stone. She gives him the same electric shocks he has given her. Following that, she starts a massive electrical machine and places one wire on his mouth and the other on the iron bed to increase the current, and Ivan's father will perish in the flames. The same thing happens every time. Katie now goes to the basement to exact revenge on the lady. She bursts into song. The lady arrives in the basement after hearing this voice. When the lady notices Katie outside the box, she pushes her back inside. Katie, on the other hand, picks up the box's door and repeatedly hits the lady on the head. She injures her. The lady faints at this point. Meanwhile, Ivan enters the basement and reaches the sewage line. He notices his curly-haired brother is faint. He's in prison. Meanwhile, the detective knew everything and was talking to the father. He also reaches the sewage line to assist Katie. Katie has murdered the curly-haired boy in order to torture the lady. She's also apprehended Ivan. She begins crushing his body parts in a pressing machine. Ivan was still resisting Katie and pressing against her neck. Ivan is killed by a bullet to the head by the detective. He apologizes to Katie for not being able to assist her at the time she came to him, but Katie remains silent because she has done it all herself. Katie walks outside and smiles. It was a calm smile because she exacted her vengeance on the evil people. She takes it to the American embassy. She informs the people present that I have committed murders. I mean, she has given up there. She was unconcerned about punishment or being caught because she was certain she had done everything correctly with those rapists. We hope you enjoyed our video from today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to receive notifications of new and interesting videos.